Hey everyone, it's been a long time. I've still been getting a lot of requests on how to set up ASIO with OBS and what's the best way to go about streaming audio through your DAW. Luckily for us, the developer of OBS ASIO came out with a new version within the past couple weeks that provides better functionality for your audio interface and different inputs. And just for reference, I'm running on Windows 10 version 1909. And the way you look that up is you go to the start menu, type in WinVer, press enter, and you can see I'm on version 1909, but there is a newer version that came out, which is 2004. But I just wanted to make this known for clarity's sake that this is the version of Windows 10 I'm running on. So the first thing you need to get out of the way is to install your audio drivers directly from the manufacturer in order to get the proper ASIO driver for your system. I currently am using the Scarlett Solo third generation. So I downloaded and installed Focusrite Control 3.6.0, which installed a Focusrite interface, as well as the ASIO driver for my Scarlett Solo. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is install the latest version of OBS. I'm running on 26.0.2. I believe this was released back in October. So go ahead and download and install that so you can proceed to the next step. After you have OBS installed, you're going to want to install OBS ASIO. Links for all these different pieces of software will be in the description. For OBS ASIO, on the right side, you're going to see something that says releases. Go ahead and click on releases. Scroll down and click on the text that says OBS ASIO installer. After you have that installed, it's gonna require a second step, which the developer actually mentions in the description of this latest release. He states that version three of this plugin requires a site install of the base ASIO.dll, which they cannot ship. So you're gonna to need to download it from the Unforeseen website. So if we go ahead and open this link, we're gonna be able to download the base ASIO.dll and it's going to be at the very top of the page where it says download under platform Win32. To extract all my zip files, I typically use WinRAR. Um, you don't necessarily need it as Windows has its own extraction tool available by default. But if you like to use WinRAR, I'll leave a link in the description as well. I typically go with the 5.91 release here, and it comes in many different languages. English is right here, kind of on the second row, and I go ahead and install the 64-bit version. Once you have the base ASIO DLL downloaded, you're going to go ahead and right-click on that. And if you have WinRAR installed, you could do extract to base ASIO 1.4, which basically puts it into its own folder. That way all the files aren't scattered all over the area that you downloaded in. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. It's gonna create a new folder here. We're gonna go into the folder that says X64, and we're gonna copy this base ASIO.dll file. If we go back to the instructions, it states that we should unzip and copy the base ASIO.dll file in the X64 folder of OBS Studio plugins. So now that we have the base ASIO file copied, let's go back into the C drive, program files, OBS Studio, OBS plugins, 64 bit, and we're going to paste it in this area here. The next thing we're gonna do is open up OBS and in the sources section here, we're gonna to navigate towards the bottom where there's a plus sign. And at the top, you're gonna to see something called ASIO input. You can name this whatever you like. I'm just gonna put test ASIO, push okay. Once you're in this window here, you're gonna select which audio interface you're going to be using that the ASIO input can take advantage of. Now, if I refer back to the first step of this video, I said to install your drivers. And that is a crucial point because if you do not have your drivers installed, OBS ASIO will not be able to detect which device you want to use. For me, I could select the Focusrite USB ASIO. And if I click on OBS channel one, it'll show the inputs I have for my specific device. Now in the past, I had a universal audio Apollo twin for my Windows PC, and it did show up with all 16 inputs. But right now I'm only getting two because my Scarlett Solo only has two available. So since I have my mic plugged into the first input of the Scarlett, I'm going to select ASIO zero input one. I'm going to leave alone channel two since it's not needed. And I'm gonna put the sample rate to match my DAW as well as Ableton. That way it keeps things more consistent. The buffer size you could lower or higher depending on what you're going to record or if you're going to record anything at all. But for now I'll leave it at the default 192. As you can see in OBS, we're getting a good level, but let's make sure OBS is picking up the signal in mono. And the way we check for that is to click this gear icon in the middle, go into advanced audio properties here at the bottom, 
and make sure the mono checkbox is selected for ASIO input. Next, we're going to install something called Voxango Recorder. This is going to allow us to route audio from our DAW into OBS pretty much hassle-free. Now, in order to run this plugin, you're going to need something called JBridge. If we click on Features and Compatibility, it states that this plugin is compatible with Windows XP, which was a long time ago in the PC world. So it is suggested to run this plugin by bridging using JBridge. That way it could work properly in 64-bit audio host applications, which pretty much all of them are now exclusively. For this video, I'll be using Ableton, but the process should remain the same in something like FL Studio. So at the top of this page, we're gonna go ahead and click on Download VST for Win32. Once you have that downloaded, we're gonna do the same thing we did with Base ASIO. Right click on it, Extract. It's going to create its own folder, and you can see it just gives us the .dll file to put into the plugins folder that our DAW will scan. Now I'm sure most of you already have a VST plugins folder set up, but for this demonstration, I went ahead and created a new one. I just created a folder in the C drive called VST plugins, and I copied the Voxango recorder.dll file into this folder. Once you have JBridge installed, you're gonna right click on it and make sure that you run as administrator. If you do not run as administrator, it won't be able to bridge properly, so make sure you do that. We have to select which architecture our VST host is running. In this case, since I'm using Ableton, I'm gonna click on 64-bit. The rest of these options, I'm gonna leave default, and I'm gonna select the highly recommended option, which is to create bridging files inside a directory I will choose. The first thing is we're gonna select the VST folder, which we copied our Voxangle recorder into. And then we're going to select the destination directory for bridging the files. Now, if you want, you could use the same directory that we selected before, or you could create another one in there called bridged. So I'm going to select bridged, push OK, and it should give you a notification that says one file bridged for using in your 64-bit VST host. Now, before we hop into our DAW, let's make sure all of our audio settings are set correctly as well as within OBS. So to get to your sound settings in Windows, go to the start menu, type in sound. The first thing that should pop up is sound settings. Click on that. On the right side of the screen, you'll see something that says sound control panel. Go ahead and click on that. Within sound control panel, you will see multiple outputs on the playback tab. Just make sure that your audio interface is set to the default. In this case, for me, it's the Focusrite USB audio, which is my Scarlett Solo third generation. And the device we are going to use to route the audio through Voxengo Recorder is going to be this Realtek digital output. Now, if you don't see this on your list, make sure you download the audio drivers for your motherboard directly from the manufacturer. If you don't know what kind of motherboard you have, you could download this program called CPU-Z. I'll put the link in the description. Essentially, all you have to do is scroll down a little bit. On the left side, click on Zip English. Download now. After you download the Zip, file, you're going to right click and extract it to its own folder, open up that folder, and you're going to double click on CPU Z X64. Once you open it up, you'll see many tabs on the screen, click on main board, and it will show you which motherboard and model you have. In this case, for me, I have the X299 SLI plus from MSI. So I would go ahead and go to MSI's website, look up my specific board, click on support, scroll down to driver, select my operating system, which is Windows 10 64 bit and then expand the section that says onboard audio drivers. In this case, it's the one we're looking for, the Realtek High Definition Audio Driver, and that will allow you to get all the necessary drivers in order for Voxango Recorder to properly route the audio back to OBS. Now back into OBS, we're gonna click on settings, go to audio, and the only thing I pretty much have enabled on my desktop audio is the Focusrite USB audio. If I click on that, you'll see one of the available options is the Realtek Digital Output, which is what we're gonna use later for our DAW to route the audio back to OBS. In order to do that, we're gonna to need to create a new source. So go ahead and click on this plus sign here and click on audio output capture. Now I named mine DAW, you can name yours whatever you like and make sure to select Realtek digital output from the drop down menu. The last thing we're gonna do before we jump into our DAW is set up the sync offset option within the advanced audio properties. This is gonna be for the audio output capture we just created. In the case for me, I named mine DAW. So let's hop into the gear icon, click on advanced audio properties, 
and you'll see in the middle there's a thing that says sync offset. By default, they're all set to zero, but for our source that we just created, mine's labeled DAW, I'm gonna set it to minus 150 milliseconds. The reason for this is because Voxango Recorder gives a bit of latency, and so to compensate for that and allow your DAW to be more in sync with OBS, we're going to create a little bit of a sync offset of minus 150 milliseconds. Now you may have to play around with this number depending on your audio interface and your DAW, but for me, minus 150 works out pretty well. Now let's take a look at our DAW here. If I go into options and go to preferences, you could see in the audio tab, I have my driver type set to ASIO and the audio device set up to my focus right. In order for us to get the bridged plugin version of Voxango Recorder, I'm gonna click on plugins and make sure that you have a custom folder set up to scan your VSTs. In this case for me, I set it to the bridged folder, which has the converted plugin that JBridge created when we set it up earlier. If I click on plugins, you'll see Voxango Recorder.64 shows up and we're gonna drag this over to the master bus. Within here, we're gonna to have to change a few settings. The first one at the top, make sure you select the Realtek Digital Output option. For the buffer count, go ahead and click on 16. The buffer size, I set this to the lowest at 128. If you set the buffer size higher, you're gonna get more latency within OBS and you might have to mess with your offset a little more. Output to file, we're gonna click on file and change that to MME. And bit depth, we could leave at 32 float or 32, whichever you prefer. One thing to note with this specific method is that you will not be able to play sounds from the browser within Ableton, but once you drag them into the actual timeline in the middle, they should be able to play back just fine, and I could show you what I mean by that. So after you have these settings set up, you're gonna go ahead and press start, and you could actually exit out of this for now. And if I play back a sound here, you should be able to hear it. Now the thing I was talking about in regards to the browser is, let's say for example on the left side I click on samples and I click on one of these, I will be able to hear that in my headphones since I have my headphones plugged directly into the Scarlett, but that will not transfer onto OBS. In order for it to transfer onto OBS, I have to drag this file inside the timeline and then play it from within here so OBS can actually receive that audio. The reasoning for this may be that when previewing sounds in the browser on the left side, it doesn't get affected by any plugins on the master fader. So I assume that's why it cannot be transferred over into OBS properly. I think that's gonna pretty much wrap up this video. If you have any other questions, the best way to reach me is through my Discord. I'll leave a link in the description for that. I'm going to be putting out another video in the next month or so comparing the new M1 Mac Mini to my current late 2018 Mac Mini and see how the performance differs between the two. Anyways, hope this video helped. See you guys in the next one.